Now up 3-0 after setting the record for the largest win by a number 8 seed in playoff history by beating the Boston Celtics by 26 in South Beach. It's actually laughable that ESPN's BPI gave the Heat a 3% chance of winning this series. Jimmy Butler's own Grant Williams and Al Horford as Grant poked the bear back in Boston for Game 2, fueling Butler to a beastly 27 piece, but the very talking point that determined the fate of Miami from my perspective coming into this series, that being their role players, they were the ones who stole the narrative in Game 3. Dade County's undrafted phenoms stole the show and are the scriptwriter's dream given their inspirational stories by how they overcame the odds of not hearing their name called by Commissioner Adam Silver. Gabe Vincent, Duncan Robinson, Max Struess, and Caleb Martin are four crucial Miami Heat rotation guys who are proven to the basketball universe that not being a top pick, or not being a pick at all for that matter, is far from the only route to make your dream a reality. The respective journeys from Vincent, Robinson, Struess, and Martin have been inspirational and the four just combined to outscore the Celtics' entire starting five. In terms of plus-minus, these undrafted phenoms combined to outscore Boston by a mind-boggling plus 78 when the four graced the court. In terms of the rest of their numbers, Gabriel Namdi Vincent, the nuclear bomb, torched the Boston defense with deep range shots like a man possessed, pouring in 29 points to outscore both Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown by himself. Caleb Martin was a team high plus 34, combining with Vincent to make 10 threes. Duncan Robinson came just four points short of matching the total of Boston's duo in the Jays by pouring in five threes and finishing with 22 off the pine. Stay tuned to see how it was an absolute assassination from the New Age Heatles, whether or not they're capable of finishing their business with five more W's to secure franchise championship number four, and how they ultimately bullied Beantown. This blowout got so bad that Heat fans started the We Want Haslam chance. What a story it would be, by the way, if Miami could win Udonis a ring in the final year of his career. But Jason, I'm humbly one of the best players, Tatum, has now posted zero points in the fourth quarter three times in a row. For the Celtics, blaming Coach Missoula seems like the easy route to take. And while I'm not saying he doesn't deserve any of the blame, there's only so much he can do if his players don't buy in. Missoula embraces a lot of the blame, which in turn gets him a lot of the blame, but as a rookie head coach, an Eastern Conference Finals appearance is a solid accomplishment. Bottom line is, if you were going to suspend Yudoka for the season, it may not be appropriate to blame Missoula for replacing him as best he could, but maybe some of the blame goes to Brad Stevens. However, the most recent report regarding Missoula stemmed from Brian Windhorse, who said, quote, there's a wave of anger from New England and a rising expectation elsewhere. Joe Missoula will pay the price for this 0-3 hole the Celtics find themselves in. Jalen Brown has also been really bad in this series, which we can't fault Missoula for, as JB is shooting 37.7% from the field, 10% from three, and 50% from the foul line while being a minus 26. For a duo that I've labeled in the past to be the most talented in Celtics history, to have 21 assists to 23 turnovers is simply put, embarrassing. Magic Johnson would put it best on the Boston L, saying, In my 44 years of being associated with the NBA, I never thought I'd see a Boston Celtics team, a franchise with 17 championships, quit. I know Celtics fans all over the world must be disgusted and devastated. Al Horford would mock the Heat during a Celtics run back in Game 2, gaining traction on Twitter for rubbing in said run with his signature timeout celly, but the butler's all about the drama, and using anything he can for motivation, Jimmy would give Horford and the reigning East champions a taste of their own medicine, bending down for that same celly as the Heat pulled away in the third quarter of Game 3. By the looks of it, Jimmy seems to have infiltrated the Celtics' lair, if you will, as Smart would say to him during the game, as heard during a broadcast with magnified audio, we beat y'all last year, we good, stop talking the whole fucking game. On a separate note, Gabriel Namdi Vincent is about to receive a massive payday as the four-year product of UC Santa Barbara has an easy-to-time-up quick-switch jump shooting release that he can utilize seamlessly whether he's spotting up or taking it off the dribble. The 26-year-old who spent two years with the Stockton Kings of the G League after not hearing his name called in 2018's draft, 
will now be eligible for a massive payday come 2023 summer. A report from Shams just under a month ago stated, this is a guy that's going to go into unrestricted free agency. He's going to have a significant market around the league as a guy that can not only potentially start, but also come off the bench. Gabe is in the final year of his two-year, $3.5 million deal he signed with the Heat in August of 2021. With a cap hit of $1.6 million this season, Vincent will likely have secured 10 times that big of an annual bag at this time next year. Gabe would say post-game with the TNT guys that Boston isn't going to lay down, to which Chuck responded with, Yeah, no, clearly you didn't watch the game tonight. Yep. Uh <laughs> Considering through three games of the NBA's Final Four, Gabe's averaging 18 points on a shooting split of 61-56-100, equating to a ridiculous 83% true shooting mark, who knows how much this man will be getting paid come 2023-24. Gabe would be the first player in NBA history to average 15 plus points per game on a 60-50-100 split in the Eastern Conference Finals. In addition to those 18 points, Gabe's also been solid defensively. He's averaging 1.3 steals per night in this series, and his defensive rating would surmount to what would be a top 10 rating among shooting guards during the regular season. Then there was Duncan Robinson who didn't hesitate like he hasn't been all playoffs long on Sunday, letting his elusive, high-arcing, long-distance sniping stroke fly with utter fluidity and confidence, the two qualities that any elite jump shooter requires. In the absence of Tyler Hero, the former NCAA talent who split his time between a D2 program at Williams College, in addition to the University of Michigan in Robinson, has been exceptional throughout his resumed run being back in Spoh's rotation, Duncan would pass LeBron for the most playoff threes made in Heat history. The Struess, as in Max, wasn't on the loose per se as much as he usually is, making just two of his eight shots from the field, but the product of a small D1 program in Chicago, being DePaul University, who also split his time in college at a D2 school at Lewis University, was a game fourth best plus 20. Yet another undrafted phenom for Miami who split his time between two programs in college and Caleb Martin, who played at NC State for two years and then Nevada for another two years, followed up a playoff career high of 25 points, which he posted in Game 2, by in 35 minutes being a team high plus 34 in Game 3. Just what a luxury Caleb's been with his mobility and bucket-getting prowess. All credit goes to Pat Riley in the front office, in addition to coach Eric Spolstra, who's on the same page with Riley. These two combine to take chances on any talent that fits their needs and that they like as players and humans. Judging whether to acquire these players without any biases in terms of their background as players, that's led this Heat team to have an assortment of perfectly suited weapons around Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Speaking of Bam, Man was an absolute force, either on the low block or catching lobs in the pocket. Man had a couple massive throwdowns. Only 13% of my audience is subscribed, so please subscribe if you enjoyed that video. Splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter.